Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this reading is dated for the 25th, it doesn't mean it absolutely has to resonate with you at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. Oh, uh -huh. sorry, guys. <laughs> I forgot to put on some chapstick before I started. Okay. Also, keep in mind that um, this is a general reading. Okay. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Yes. All right. Um, I don't really have anything to start with other than I'm slowly getting through the monthly zodiacs for March. Um, this is, and you know, it's funny because I was thinking about it and it's like, I was one, I was doing these Zodiac readings and they just seem to be a, a tad bit difficult at the moment. I was like, why? I was trying to figure out why are these, like, it just, it does, it feels weird. I mean, granted, I'm doing them differently. I'm going live for them at least this, this round, but also I've changed my format here. So I'm still trying to, even though it feels right, I'm still trying to like, still like get into it get into the groove of it but then also i was thinking why what is wrong but then also i remembered mercury is still in retrograde <laughs> so communication and technology and all that stuff that's a little bit trickier now so okay fine eric it's not such a big deal <laughs> but anyway um i did two more of them yesterday gemini and cancer are up now i'm going to be doing more of them today so stay tuned because i will be going live we're starting with leo today at some point um and i'm going to see how much i can do I'll probably get through Leo, Virgo, and Libra. I might get to Scorpio. I might. Depends. It depends on how I feel. It depends on how much time I have. Um, and then, yeah. So look out for that today. Yes? Oh, also, I don't know if you can hear, but construction is in full swing across the street. Sounds like they're um, sawing metal two-by-fours. Is kind of what that sounds like. Metal studs. Oh, look, and there's a, there's a dove outside my window. Oh, that's cute. Okay, <laughs> let's get into this, yeah? Two, two, two. All right, here we go, kids. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, kids, ladies and gentlemen, dudes and dudettes, I want to start with the secret language of light again today. Let's see, for the collective here, what is the topic of discussion for today? What is the message for today? What messages do you have for us, Spirit? What do you want us to know today? What would you like to discuss with us today? Let me give this one more shuffle. For the collective here. All right, spirit, what have you got for us today? Authentic truth, inward revolution. Okay, stop here, they're saying. All right, overall energy is soul writing. Okay, so first thing that I get with soul writing here is that some of you would really benefit from an automatic writing process, uh, practice. I know that's something that um, my very dear friend, his name is Julian. He is a, an astrologer. I've mentioned him before. Um, I've been working with him lately. He's been, he's been such a godsend to me i'm trying to adjust this light because it's like right on this card here but you know what <laughs> it's fine okay um julian and uh, in, he's on instagram as julian skywalker if you guys haven't checked him out i highly recommend that you do so he is really helping me go through a major transformation um, and i'm really grateful to him for it but automatic writing was something that he recommended that i start doing and so I'm slowly and slowly kind of, you know, working my way there, try, uh, working that out and all that. Um, but 
this also so so that is something that you know comes to mind that you guys might want to look into but also with soul writing here as the overall energy I, this is really f especially with the rest of the cards that we hear that are here this really feels like the contract that you've written on a soul level for this lifetime and i'm not really talking about you know how other people are associate or involved with that contract because right now with the message that's here between soul song and authentic truth and inward revolution and you are the universe all the message that to the message here today is very much centered around the self centered around you around you being the center of your universe or you being the universe you are the universe okay so what soul writing here is speaking is bringing to mind for me is the mission that you're here for okay coupled with soul song and authentic truth there is there is some there is a song there is a, a a vibration there is a sound there is a frequency that you are here to bring that is authentic to you okay and i'm getting i'm picking up that you know it's this authenticity that you are really being guided to embody okay we do have inward revolution all right, so this really, feel, especially with Mercury being in retrograde, granted, it's only going to be retrograde until I think the 9th of March, but then we do still have a seven day shadow period where um, we're dealing with the after effects of it before it goes di completely direct. But especially with Mercury being in retrograde, we just had a new moon Sunday night, this past Sunday, two days ago on the 23rd. Um, and, you know, also it's Pisces season. So right now, at least in Western astrology, it's Pisces season. I'm not sure when Pisces starts in Eastern astrology. Anyway, um, this has kind of been the energy of the season. This has kind of, be, kind of been the, um, the directive of the season. It's clearing out um, the old in, so that the new can come in. But what's really being encouraged for the new to come in here is your authentic truth. What is the song that your soul sings? Okay. Um, and you, it's really about getting to the bottom of that. With Inward Revolution, it's really about clearing away, excavating everything that stands in the way of you being your authentic self, uh, expressing and living your authentic truth, singing your soul song, following through with the plan, the contract, the, 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 the vision that your soul has for this incarnation for your life. Okay. You are the universe is here to remind you. Now this is a card. <laughs> 29 does boil down to 11. And I do want to mention that we have 40 card 41 and 42 here. That's really cool. I just like the fact that it's, um, it's a six in succession like that, but um, the universe or, or what's going on here is you're being rem reminded that you are the universe. You are not separate from the universe. You are not powerless. You are not um, at the mercy of the elements, at the mercy of the universe, at the mercy of the chaos of the universe, or at least what we, how we see the, how the universe runs or works from a three-dimensional point of view. It's fairly chaotic, but actually there's quite a bit of order to it. But fact of the matter here is you are the universe. You have the power of the universe at your fingertips, at your disposal. This is part of your authentic truth. Okay. Okay. Now, I, uh, this is beautiful. So I, I really encourage you to take this time to go through your inward revolution. Do whatever it is you need to do in order to do that. I mean, I'm on the. I'm about to do that myself. You guys will find out eventually. But, I mean, if you need to take some major steps to do some clearing, to get down to your authentic truth, then by all means, do it. And, I mean, I'm very much, especially since, you know, I begrudgingly, I guess, you know, I really shouldn't say that. Um but I do find myself, or I have found myself on a twin flame journey, right? And regardless of what, however that has, you know, worked its way out from whatever is happening, at, you know, currently what I see on my, in my 3D resist, uh, yeah, resistance. Okay. Yeah. I'm seeing resistance in the 3D, but quite frankly, the resist there, I'm, I'm, I'm really noticing my own resistance to the situation, even though, you know, this thing, the, the situation flared up. The energies flared up again over the holiday season and now we're in we're you know halfway through february and i'm 
resistant. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I'm resistant to it again. Um, but things have changed. My mindset has changed. My, my view has changed. My perspective has changed. And the perspective, the major thing that's changed about my perspective on this journey is the fact that I have finally gotten to the point where I am choosing myself now above all other things. And I need to do that in order to be here for like, say you guys in the channeling that I'm doing here, like I need to be able to do the things that I need to do to be a clear vessel, to be a healthy vessel, to be an open vessel so that I can continue to be a leader, a guide, a channeler for you guys, because this is something that I really want to continue doing in my life above all else. Now, in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to take certain steps that some people might find drastic, but quite frankly, it's exactly what I need so that I can get down to this authentic truth, so that I can shed all of the, the layers that my ego has been building over the three decades that I've been on this planet, so that I can really sing my soul song. And that is this inward revolution that is being called for. Now, would you say that this is a reading that resonates with me? Hell fucking yeah. <laughs> But also, this is what happens as readers here, and this happens all the time. We go through certain things so that we can build or develop a certain perspective of it, so that we can then bring that knowledge or bring our understanding to you guys that are also that also may be going through the same thing. So just so the, so please don't get please don't get caught up on the fact that the readings that we do here a lot of the time will resonate with us as readers yes we're trying to remain detached we're not you know what i mean it's not like i want to be up here on the youtube putting my whole life out there for everybody to see like i don't mind sharing but also i would like to have some privacy right like my, it's not my goal to toot my own horn here i'm here to help you guys and so in order to really effectively help you guys i've got to go through this stuff too okay okay awesome so with that said, let's move forward here. I want to get to some clarity. And for clarity, I'm going to start with a tarot. And I'm actually going to start with authentic truth because this is what I feel like is the most challenging aspect of this shift for us right now. Allowing ourselves, and that's the, the, the key phrase, allowing, the key word is allowing, allowing ourselves to get down to the bottom of what our authentic truth really is. For some of us, the challenge is to even allow ourselves to start to even perceive that authentic truth, to be open enough to allow that authentic truth to even seep into our conscious, our, yeah, our conscious, from our subconscious into our conscious, right? Our conscious perspective is what spirit is saying so i want to look at the tarot here through this um i want to see what what obstacles are standing in the way what elements are standing in the way of this authentic truth for yourself getting down getting to the bottom of this authentic truth last shuffle okie dokie here we go Wow. Oh my God. Death with the tower. Holy shit. High priestess. Good God, y'all. Okay. Okay. Just keep going. Okay. I'm going to stop right there for now. Overall. Guys, you can't make this stuff up. Overall energy is the hermit. Hi, Virgo. But overall energy is the Virgo. Is the Virgo. Is the hermit. Whoa, seven of wands, but the seven of wands has fallen out on you are the universe here. Okay, we'll look at that in a, sec in a second. Yes, I knew that was the six of cups and the knight of pentacles. The knight of pentacles is crossing all of this. Do I leave it that way or do I turn it upright? Turn it upright, please. Okay, but I think it did come out. I get it. I get it. The Knight of Pentacles is here, and it's a good thing. You also have the Six of Cups. Okay, fine. Oh, 
Okay, fine. Um, my resistance is coming forward. I'm going to be completely honest with you because this Six of Cups is, in fact, talking about some sort of soulmate situation. But we'll get, we'll get to that in a second. Um, the Knight of Pentacles has come out crossed, and that what, that's what I feel like is the biggest challenge for you getting down to the, this authentic truth. And what I'm getting with that is... There is some sort of uncertainty or there's some sort of desire to rush through or just get to it already. But what you really need to be focusing on is the process because it is within the journey of discovering that you're authentic, uh, discovering that discovering your authentic truth that you are able to really understand and comprehend its meaning. You need to go through the steps in order to really understand what it means for you and really to, uh, to really get to the bottom of that authenticity. But damn, y'all, the tower, death, and the high priestess. So this definitely feels like an ego death, okay? You really have to shed the layers of your ego in order to get down to this authentic truth because it is the layers of ego that have helped that have been that you've been putting on we'll call it putting on the pounds yes over the years of your incarnation here and that's perfectly natural that is the nature of the world that we live in but now that we're in this paradigm shift or in this time where we're shifting from the 3d consciousness more to a five-dimensional consciousness we are going to have to shed the layers of the ego that we have put on so that we can get down to the bottom of who we truly are and what it is we're truly here to do the hermit is the overall energy going within so another thing that is necessary here for um dealing with this authentic truth or getting to the bottom of this authentic truth is being in solitude being with yourself, kind of isolating yourself from the rest of the world, okay? Now, the Six of Cups is here, but now that I've been talking through all of that, I do see a different way of speaking to this. Now, there is an element for some of us here that there is a soulmate relationship here that is directly in alignment with who you are, with your truth, with your soul truth, but there is resistance to that. I mean, hello, I'm an example of that resistance, but I feel like, at least from my point of view, for me speak, speaking personally, I feel like my resistance to it has everything to do with the fact that I need space, I need time, I need to go within, and I need to find my authenticity, I need to shed these layers of my ego that are causing me to be in this resistance to begin with. I, mean, I need to shed these layers of my ego that are causing me to be out of alignment, that caused me to sing anything other than my true soul song. Okay, and so I guess for a lot of you, that's what you're going through as well. But the other thing that the Six of Cups is bringing to mind is getting back to the innocence of your inner child. Your purity. The inner child within. And we've been talking about that for some time now on the channel. You know, there's a lot of been, there's been a lot of inner child work but it's not even about healing your inner child right now, or at least that's not the message that I'm getting here. The message that I'm getting for this is reconnecting with your inner child, embodying your inner child, living your life from a place of being, uh, from a place of childlike wonder and excitement and freedom and compassion. Because children are free. Children are born into this world with a free mind you know, with, with a brand new perspective. It's not until, I mean, yes, some of the programming, some of the conditioning does start in utero, okay? Because you, as, as, you're, as you're gestating, <laughs> we'll say, in your mother's womb, you are picking up some of the programming from her life and from the family around you. But it doesn't, the indoctrination, we'll call it, doesn't really truly start until you're born, okay? And the first what is it? Is it the first two years or the first something? There's a, there's a number that is like the most critical for you in this stage of development. And that's where we are trained to start putting on these masks and putting on these egoic layers, right? But what this is talking about here is with the tower, death, and the high priestess, this ego death that's happening for you, that's allowing you to get to your authentic truth, that has everything to do, everything to do with getting back to your inner child. 
And, and the most important message with that is living your life or allowing yourself to live your life from a sense of childlike wonder. I don't care how old you are. You could be 20, you could be 30, you could be 40, you could be 50, you could be 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 plus. You can still live your life from a place of childlike wonder, period. Age ain't nothing but a number, honey. And to be quite honest, quite frankly, you will eternally be a child of the universe. A child of God, if you even see it that way, if you want to call it that. So why not just embrace that and live it? I promise you, you'll be much happier in the end. Okay? Now we do have the seven of wands here that has fallen on you are the universe and i get a very i get a very specific and specific and distinct message with the seven of wands here about how it's time for us to stop guarding ourselves from that fact and start guarding ourselves from those that try to take us or keep us from that fact own your truth own the fact that you are the universe you are a physical embodiment of the universe and do not allow yourself to believe or accept anything less than that truth. Because that will always be the case. Just like you will eternally be a child of the universe, you will eternally be a physical embodiment of the universe, regardless of what physical form you take, whether you're in physical form or not. You will always be the universe seeking to experience itself. Hold on to that fact. Do not allow anyone to tell you otherwise. I want to get a little bit more on this. Let's get a little bit more on this, please. You on the universe with the seven of wands here. The sun in reverse. That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Overall energy is the four of swords. So I kind of want to tell you like the literal message, the first message that came through with this is you need to meditate on this. And that's really why I feel like the sun came out in reverse here, because this is the truth. And yet for some reason, we're not accepting it. We're not allowing ourselves to accept it. Oh, shoot. The moon with the five of wands in re reverse. Okay. So the... It's interesting. The Five of Wands, when it came out of the deck, it was actually upright, but I was, I was guided to flip it over a certain way so that now it is in reverse. Okay. Um, wow. The sun and the moon. You guys recognize that the sun is reversed and the moon is upright. What this is specifically saying here is that we have allowed ourselves to accept illusion over clarity. And it's through the indoctrination that has been running rampant in human society for centuries that we have been allowed to, that we have allowed ourselves to do this. In, in many ways, we've forced, we've been forced into this. It was kind of like a perfect storm. So in, in me saying this, I don't want you guys to, to, to beat, I don't want anybody to beat yourselves up about that. I'm hearing indoctrination has been or is a key part of our existence. It has helped us to come to understand the truth of who we are from different aspects or different points of view. So now we can, in fact, stop all the fighting, right? And all the ego battles, whatnot, whatever. And we can turn this around so that the sun is upright and the moon is reversed here. Okay, but well, also what I'm getting with the moon upright and the sun reversed, there could be some revelations that you come to that you would need to meditate to find. Go on, if you guys can go on a retreat, do it. Absolutely do it. If you could just get away from the world or escape somehow, do it. Because I believe, I feel like it would be very, very beneficial. Yes? Very beneficial. Um, all right, so now I want to look at why is inner inward revolution here? What do you have to tell us, spirit? 
Sorry, I have to adjust my chair. Okay, what do you want to tell us, Spirit, about this inward revolution? Why is inward revolution here? Justice. You guys, you cannot make this stuff up. Justice. This is what this inner revolution, inward revolution, is bringing into your life. So for many of you that have been feeling injustices happening towards you, ah, yes, with the four of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. So for many of you that have been just feeling like you, things haven't been just, you haven't been getting what you deserve, you haven't been getting what you heard that was going to happen, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. There are some things, there is an ego death that needs to happen here in order for you to bring forward this justice, to bring forward this inward revolution, for you to get the things that you know that you deserve, that you know that you're worthy of. But in order to do that, guys, you have got to let go of some physical elements of, of your life. Again, ego death. I think I might even title this reading that. It's time for an ego death. I want to go a little further. What is this? What can you tell us about this justice or inward revolution? What else can you tell us about this spirit? What else is this for us? The five of pentacles. Yes. Yes. With the queen of wands. Oh my God. Keep going. That's enough. Overall energy is the three of pentacles. Okay. So the three of pentacles is about self mastery. So again, this is exactly what we've been talking about. All right. Three of Pentacles, rebuilding yourself, reshaping yourself. And with the Four of Pentacles that was on the bottom of the deck before, it's like we're taking a step back. We're stripping away layers that no longer serve us. We're going through an ego death so that we can rebuild this foundation because that's really what this three of pentacles represents it represents um entrepreneurship it represents uh, uh teamwork it represents self-mastery but it also represents the physical process of building a foundation of building something new and it and that translates into self-mastery and also teamwork in the sense that you have body mind and spirit that are doing this together within yourself inward revolution right so this is helping us to get rid of to get out of this lack mentality five of pentacles to get out of all of this illusion that keeps us from believing that we have the power of the universe at our fingertips we are living examples living embodiments of the universe look that's a card that's a 29 that's number 11 right there okay be the magnetic queen Embody, embrace your own inner feminine energy. Allow yourself to be that embodiment of the law of attraction. Queen of Wands. Ugh. With judgment. Come on. I mean. You, I mean, you guys are seeing this. <laughs> you guys are seeing this, right? Like, it's time to step up. We are being called to higher levels. We are being called to... Higher, higher vibrations. So it's time to let go of fear. It's time to let go of the lack mentality, of the feelings of inadequacy, of believing that we are powerless when we are, in fact, the universe ourselves. Each and every one of us is an embodiment of the universe. And if you think that's ridiculous, there's no way each and every one of us could embody the universe. Honey, then you are not aware of just how vast and infinite the universe is. And oh, by the way, we as in humans and the other living beings that are on this planet are not the only beings in existence. But that's a topic for another time, right? <laughs> the Queen of Wands is bringing forward an energy here of being your authentic self yes that's what spirit says but also being confident being charismatic being connected to your own sense of wisdom and magic and, and and fun and love even be the magnetic queen that you are everybody has that queen of winter energy within queen of wands energy within them everybody has masculine and feminine energy within I want to look at Soul Song now. What can you tell us about Soul Song, Spirit? Okay. Okay. Wow. 
Ah, yes. Okay. Well, good. We have the three of, I'm sorry, the four of wands at the bottom of the deck here. We do have the three of cups, which has come out in reverse with the five of cups here and the, ooh, the two of cups in reverse. Oh boy. Um, and then we have the seven of pentacles, the, oh shit, the queen of pentacles and the king of wands. Oh my goodness. All right, so this is taking a little bit of a romantic turn. This is taking a little bit of a romantic turn here. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I am, I'm kind of picking up on the twins now, or the twin collective, or at least divine partnerships, or whatnot, whatever. Soul Song here is talking about what is, I mean, this is directly related to, um, you know, your authentic truth, but what is the song of your soul? What is the frequency of your soul? What is it your song is here? Uh, what is it that your soul, I'm sorry, guys, my nose, man. Sometimes when I, when I channel for the collective, my nose just wants to explode on me. But um, what is it that your, the song that your soul is here, is really here to sing? What is the truth of your soul? What is the message of your soul? What is the frequency of your soul? And yeah, the spirit is saying this is 100% directly related to your authentic truth. And someone has not been living that. Someone hasn't been living that. Many of us haven't. I mean, we've all haven't been living that on the, to a certain extent, but there's someone here that really has, is, not, is not living that. We have the three of cups, we have the two of cups, and now we have the five, of, and we have the five of cups. We also have the seven of pentacles, the queen of pentacles, and the king of wands. But you see how the king of wands is, um, goodness. Sorry, you see how the King of Wands is focused on the Queen of Pentacles? I'm seeing that as kind of like a karmic partner. Instead of being focused on his counterpart here, who is the Queen of Wands, but you see both of you are looking in different directions. King and Queen of Wands. The King and the Queen of Wands are looking in different directions. The King is focused on this Queen of Pentacles here. And this could be... Now this could this is not necessarily a man. This is masculine. We're just talking energies. So this isn't this has nothing to do with gender. But the King of Wands has placed his focus and what I'm hearing is has settled down for a Queen of Pentacles, for a feminine counterpart that is that looks good on paper, that is acceptable within corporeal existence. Within our three-dimensional time mind frame. And thus there is an energy here of reaping what you've sown. And it's interesting because it's interesting because the, this man on the seven of pentacles is looking right at the king of wands, or at least right in the direction of the king of wands. And the queen of pentacles isn't even focused on him either. So it feels like there are some karmic situations out here that are just not beneficial to anybody. But it's also not your soul song. Sure, you've aligned with a feminine counterpart. And to be honest, this doesn't have to be romantic. This, this queen of pentacles can represent, um, it's weird because this is a person, like obviously this queen of pentacles is a person, but I'm also kind of picking up that for some of us here, this queen of pentacles could be like a job circumstance maybe a, a parent a friend something it could, really could be anything but it's something that this king of wands is aligning with that has basically become a karmic partner who has kind of replaced what this queen of wands represents here the true sense of the counterpart but this person on the seven of pentacles is over there is looking directly in the area in the direction of the king of wands saying you reap what you sow buddy this is what you've invested your time and energy in. This is what you're going to get. And it seems with the two of cups at the three of cups in reverse and the five of cups upright, this is not a happy partnership. Or at least at some point, at this point, someone is starting to figure out what they're missing out on. And there's that dove again, that lovebird. Tells you something, huh, guys? 
you might want to look up um, dove symbology because that dove was standing there. And you know what's so crazy about that? Um, this is a little bit of a sidebar, but I don't normally hear, like, I, I grew up in New York, okay? And so I, I hear lovebirds all the time, but I don't normally hear them until the spring when it's much warmer. Granted, it's been, a, it's been really warm this winter here, at least in the city, like in the tri-state area of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Well, no, that's not true. Don't, no, that's not true. Um, I would say it's more of the, the five boroughs, really. So Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island, and the Bronx. Just this, it, it, it's funny because I've been mentioning how this, like, I thought winter was going to be really bad this year, but, like, this area of New York and everything and, like, the East Coast has been in this kind of, like, hot pocket. <laughs> I've been saying that all, all week. But I've been hearing the doves in, like, when it should be dead winter. Now, that could be an effect of, you know, the seasons and all that and global warming, which is a thing. Mm -hmm. But, hey, whatever. I'm not, whatever. <laughs> But that lovebird is significant here. There's a message in that. So you might want to look that up and read, up, read about that for yourself and see what that is for you. But I mean, I don't, I, I'm not trying to make this reading about love here, you guys. But in, when we're talking about soul song here, soul song, and we're talking about authentic truth, which is buried down here. Look at this. I mean, come on. Two of cups in reverse, three of cups in reverse, five of cups. It may even feel like or seem like someone has lost the love of their life. They've lost an opportunity because this two of cups is in reverse here. And the queen of wands, the queen to this king is looking off in the other way. She's being called to a higher purpose. She is being called to bring justice into her life, his or her life. Five of pentacles, no longer feeling inadequate. Inward revolution. Choosing yourself over some fuck shit like that, right? Four of Wands, though, is at the bottom of the deck. Somehow, this is leading to some sense of inward union. Or, it's leading to union, ultimately. So, it's funny, because I, even as I was talking about how this Two of Cups is in reverse... It still feels like all is not lost, especially with this Five of Cups. All is not lost here. Okay? And in the Five of Cups, the Two of Cups is upright. Someone is still kind of bemoaning over the fact that this social setting, the hive mind mentality, has gotten them to align with and cultivate a relationship with someone that is not their true counterpart. It's the pentacle when they're the wand. Makes sense. Also, what I'm getting with this is everything that you're experiencing here is helping you align with your true soul song. What is the true frequency of your soul? Right? But what I was also saying is that all is not lost. This relationship can still come together. But it's going to take an inward revolution in order to get there. And who knows how long that's going to take. Time is an illusion, right? Okay. So, I want to um, move on to what? I want to move on to Oracle Guidance. But I want to start with the Moonology deck first. I just want to get something from... I love this deck, you guys. This Moonology thingy. Start with the Monology deck, and then I'm not sure where I want to go for the closing Oracle Guidance, but we'll get there in a second. One more shuffle here. Okay. So what do you have for us, Spirit? What guidance do you have from us from the Moonology deck in terms of this reading? In terms of this, I, I mean, I really do want to label, I want to title this reading Ego Death.
ego death and soul revolution. That's what this feels like here. Damn. Well, shit. Well, shit. Y'all. Full moon in Leo. Don't let your pride get in your way. Talk about an ego death and a soul revolution. I mean, shit, y'all. One last card, please, spirit. <laughs> a personal issue reaches resolution. Underneath the deck is North Node. Step out of your comfort zone. And this definitely, all of this energy here feels like a North Node type situation. And you also have, you have full moon in Leo and full moon in Cancer. A personal issue reaches resolution. But in order for that resolution to be reached, you have got to go through an ego death, a realignment of your ego, and a revolution of your soul. Allowing your authentic truth to speak. Allowing your soul song to speak. Believing and remembering that you are the universe. Getting in touch with the plan for your soul. No, the plan for your life that your soul has put out for you, that has planned for you, that has written for you, the contract. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking, I really, I'm really feeling drawn to the activation oracle deck, but I've been using those for the monthly readings and I kind of want to, I, I don't want everything to be the same. So I'm going to, I'm going to save those even, you know what? No, there's a message in here for us. I just want to get one card from this and then I will get a closing message from one of our oracles. Just one card, please, spirit. Just one card. I'm really feeling drawn to this deck right now. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go with it. I'm just kind of, my ego's flaring up and be like, no, you gotta, you can't make everything the same. It's like, dude, just chill. <laughs> The messages are meant to be received. All right, one last shuffle, and I just want one card. Just one card, please, Spirit. Talking about this activations for us. What activations are coming through? Oh, there it is. Oh my God, yes! Yes! Look at this. Card number 40. Soul time. Come on. The frequency of soul time asks us to allow the possibility of a new reality to emerge. One that embraces the concept that while the corporeal body is mortal, the soul is timeless, limitless, and infinite. I mean, come on. I am so glad I listened to my intuition there. This is literally what we're talking about. So again, if you can take some time to just be with yourself, to just be with your soul, to start to listen to your soul song, because I promise you that song is playing and has been playing this whole time, but the layers of our ego have been covering it up. There's the lovebird again. There's the dove. I really, I, I mean, you guys, if y'all can take a vacation, if you can go on a retreat, if you can do something to just get to yourself, do it, please. Yes? Okay, I'm going to close this reading with Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala. One last shuffle here. Ego death and soul rev. Uh, maybe, maybe it's ego dissolution. Nah, ego death is better. <laughs> but I just, I don't. Uh, your ego is not really meant to die. It's not meant to be eradicated. You just have to reintegrate it with the fullness of yourself and allow your soul or maybe even your higher self to be in control, to be in the driver's seat, right? So maybe it is, yeah, ego dissolution. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Closing message, please, spirit, in terms of this reading today. What closing message do you have for us today, please, spirit? There it is. Oh, 
Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, we have card number 18. Heavenly, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Angel Uziel and Smoky Quartz, Heavenly Mercy. And actually, in all of the years that I've been using this deck, I don't think this card has ever really come out. This is a brand new message for the collective here, at least for us here. That's kind of cool. Okay, Heavenly Mercy. We bring you the gift of heavenly mercy. As you grow spiritually, your energy fields become your energy field becomes more substantial. Your thoughts and actions carry more karmic weight in the world. As your power increases, your ability to do good increases too. Your positive words can have a potent effect on others. So too can the very human moments where you may be having an quote, off day, and unintentionally responding to another in a way that is not unconditionally loving. Oh, wait, no, I recognize this now. You've seen this before. Okay. Um, we, we do not want to be afraid of becoming powerful. We know that most often you are going to make... I'm sorry, let me say that again. We do not want you to be afraid of becoming powerful. We know that most often you are going to make a positive contribution with your power. We also know that sometimes you will wish you could, quote, undo a choice you have made and its effect. To help you, we offer our karmic protection where the destructive impact of your actions is softened and the positive effect of your actions is enhanced. As you grow in power and impact, our gift of heavenly mercy will surround you, aligning your actions with divine will and blessing you and all affected by you with divine compassion. Wow. Oh, wow. This is a long one. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I wish you all a fantastic day. And if you can make it out, please stay tuned for the Zodiac readings that I'm going to be doing later on today. We're going to do at least uh, Leo, Virgo, and Libra. I might be able to get to Scorpio. Not quite sure. But stay tuned for that. I love you guys so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!